Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for this introduction and especially for inviting me to this great Congress. And as it couldn't be other way, uh, in a controversy Congress, I have been asked to try to answer a quite controversial question. And just to illustrate how controversial uh, the question is, just imagine what a Brazilian woman would answer to this question and then change over to what Adula would answer to this same question. So I think that you all will agree with me that the right answer must be not black nor white, but somewhere in between. But the question is where? Who else could be asked besides the Brazilian and, and, and the Dula? Maybe an international organization? And which is the largest organization around dealing with health issues? the World Health Organization. And since 1985, World Health Organization says that the adequate CSIRN section rate is between 10 and 15 percent. And this recommendation has remained unchanged for over 27 years since it was proposed. And what is happening nowadays around the world? It is estimated that 18 and a half million CSIRN sections are done every year but only 10% of the countries worldwide have CSIRN section rates within this range proposed by WHO. On the contrary, 40% of the countries that account for 60% of all deliveries around the world have still CSIRN section rates below the lower limit of this range. Whereas more than 50% of the countries have CSIRN section rates over 15%. Even more, there are 15 countries around the world that have CSIRN section rates that more than double this higher limit proposed by WHO. As you can see, most of these countries are in the American continent. In Africa, we don't find any of this. In the Middle East, we find Iran, that is the country with the second highest CSIRN section rate in the world. We find Australia, in Asia only the Republic of Korea, and in Europe we find three countries in this top 15, and one of these is Portugal with 34% national cesarean section rate. I don't know how, how accurate these da data are, but they come from the World Health Report 2010 from the World Health Organization. And if we look closer into Europe, you can see then that CSIRN section rates in Italy and Portugal more than double that of the northern countries like Finland or Norway or Sweden that have very similar C-section rates, around 70%. In the middle you find Spain and Germany with 25 and 28%, and in the lower range you find the United Kingdom with 22% and France with near 19%. And if we look even closer, I have I, I brought you that, that data from the hospitals in Catalonia, where I come from. In grey, you see the public maternity hospitals, and in green, the private ones. On the overall cesarean section rate in Catalonia is 28%, uh, pointed with the red line. Public hospitals have a C-section rate of 23% and private hospitals have 40% C-section section rate. But you can see that public, the C-section rate in public hospital range from 13% of the one with the lowest to 53% in the one with the highest C-section rate. And in, in private hospitals the range goes from 52, uh, 32 to 50%. And all these differences could not be explained only with the type of population that uh, each of these hospitals attends. As you know, the C-section rate will depend on, on many factors. The most important probably are these ones, the maternal age, the prevalence of previous cesarean sections, the incidence of labor inductions, the number of multiple births and the prematurity rate that each hospital has. Therefore, to say whether a hospital has a high or a low cesarean section rate, you need all this other data to, to, could, uh, to give an answer. That means that you need 
to use adjusted cesarean section rates. And there are two main models to adjust cesarean section rates. One is the direct standardization, and the other is the multiple logistic regression. The paradigm of uh, direct standardization is the 10-group classification that was, has already been commented this morning by uh, Professor Robson, who uh, was the, the leader of, of the introduction of, of this. Uh, type of classification. I won't go into the, uh, in each of these groups as it has already been done, but I will show you data from a study uh, coming from nine international obstetric courts with over 47,000 uh, deliveries. And here you can see that in spontaneous laboring uh, nulliparous, the overall C-section rate was 13%. In induced laboring nulliparous, including also elective C-section, it was 40%. In spontaneous laboring multiparous, it was less than 3%. In induced laboring multiparous, it, it was 20%, that is near 10 times higher. In patients with a previous C-siren section, it was 60, 67%. In breach deliveries, it was around 90%. In multiples, it was 57, and in preterm, it was 35. The other alternative is the multiple regression, uh, logistic regression model that predicts the expected number of cesarean section in a given institution based on the characteristics of the patients. And this could be demographic factors, medical conditions, obstetric conditions, between others. Then the unadjusted rate is divided by the predicted rate, that is the sum of the probabilities of all women according to their clinical characteristics, and then the result is multiplied by the national rate. The problem is that which characteristics have to be taken in account for the calculation of the predicted cesarean section rate, and the isolated and combined impact of each of these has still uh, to be defined. And this pro should probably be a task done by the w WHO, by the FIGO, by the World Association, or the International Academy. As, but until we don't have such a standardized and universally accepted uh, way to adjust cesarean section rate by, by multiple logistic regression, we won't be able to establish standards to compare institutions. And here I, I would point out that the 10-group classification um, proposed by Robson is a very good one to make an internal audit of different hospitals. But to compare different hospitals, if you have to compare 10 different C-section rates, it's not that practical at all. Adjusted cesarean section rates will also allow us to assess the, the evolution of each hospital. We don't know whether the C-section rate is increasing because we have older women or we have more multiples or just because we are doing worse obstetrics. And, and this would be solved by using adjusted cesarean section rate. And the most important, as it has already been pointed out today, this would allow us to implement corrective strategies. That is, it has been shown that lower than expected risk-adjusted cesarean section rates are associated with higher than expected adverse maternal or neonatal outcomes, whereas higher than expected risk-adjusted cesarean section rates do not result in improved outcomes. But don't forget that C-section rate is not the only quality parameters of a given obstetric institution. There are many other factors that, that are as important or even more important that, than the CCN section rates, like the prenatal mortality rate, the incidence of fetal birth injuries, birth asphyxia, maternal morbidity and mortality, and last but not least, maternal satisfaction. It, is becoming more and more important each time, not only in private hospitals, but also in public ones. I'm reaching the end of my presentation. I would just like to present you some data from, from my hospital. I come from a, a private university hospital in Barcelona with 2,600 deliveries a year. And here you can see the evolution of the C-section rate since 
10 years ago, we started with 27, and these numbers increased to, to the peak at 2007 of 33.7, and since then, we are slightly but constantly reducing the C-section rate. Last year, it was 32.6. This year, we will close below 32, as the, we had until the end of October, 31.7. In green, you see the overall cesarean section rate in Catalonia that has also stabilized around 28% in the last years. And in red, you see the prenatal mortality rate in, in our hospital that has dropped from 8.1 per thousand in 2002 to less than 2 per thousand last year. But this reduction in the prenatal mortality rate could not be attributed to the increase of cesarean sections as we haven't had uh, intrapartum death during this period, only one. And we also applied the 10 group model for last year in, in our hospital. And in spontaneous laboring in oliparous, we had the 17% C-section C -section rate that was somehow higher than that found in Brennan's study. In induced laboring nulliparose, it was 50%. This is a field where we could improve. In spontaneous laboring multiparas, we had less than the average in Brennan's groups, 1.4%. And in induced laboring multiparas, we also did well with 12% of C-sections. In patients with a previous C-section section, we had near 80%. This is a field where we also could improve our numbers. In breach nulliparas, we had 100%. Curiously, in breach multiparous patients, we still have acceptable numbers. Nowadays, we are offering uh, external cephalic version to all patients with a breach presentation. In multiples, we had similar numbers to that of uh, Tresina Simoes with 67% of C-sections. And in preterm births, we had 57%. This is, that is quite high for numbers that have been presented by Professor Robson. And this is my last slide to conclude. I think that in developed countries, national cesarean section rates should be between 15 and 25 percent, as we have the example from the northern countries like Sweden, Norway, but also from France or the United Kingdom that have national C-section rates below 25 with acceptable perinatal results that the adequate cesarean section rate is specific for each maternity hospital, and therefore adjusted cesarean section rates should be used to compare institutions, but a reliable and reproducible universal system uh, for audit of adjusted cesarean section rates is needed. We don't have it yet. And don't forget that maternity hospitals should not be judged only based on cesarean section rates, but take also in account which uh, prenatal mortality rate they have, and especially which degree of satisfaction the patients giving birth in this hospital have. And that was all. Thank you very much again for your attention. Thank you.